Hitler's once mighty Reich is strangled from the east, crushed from the west and obliterated from the sky. January 1945, as Allied armies closed in on Germany, from the west Russia readies an overwhelming attack. From the east, more than 2 million men, 7,000 tanks and 5,000 planes massed for the knockout blow against the battered armies of the Third Reich. While the Red Air Force gains strength, the Luftwaffe is desperate for pilots, planes and fuel. Adolf Gallen senses impending disaster. The Russians were able to build a mighty air force. They were able to maintain a strong air force. They were able to rearm in an area outside the reach of the German Luftwaffe. And they had no shortage of fuel. Luftwaffe aces, once supremely confident, see their ranks decimated. We were so low on fuel that we positioned our planes for takeoff by having them pulled by oxen in order to save fuel. And that each mission had to be successful. Only the most experienced pilots were used for difficult missions. But then the experienced pilots also suffered greater casualties. From Leningrad to the Crimea, Soviet forces advance. The Red Air Force reinforced with air, Cobras from America and powerful New Yak fighters fill the sky with fire. We were able now to lend air support to our troops on the battlefield. Major Fedor Arkhipenko, Red Air Force. Dominate in air power at that time, then fully shifted toward the side of the Soviet Union. Air superiority was now completely ours. The Luftwaffe is forced to ration its remaining strength. Sergeant Heinz Markard, Luftwaffe. At the end of the war, the sorties became tougher from week to week due to the superiority of the enemy at that time. The pressure on us increased because our numbers decreased steadily and we received neither replacement aircraft nor replacement pilots. Luftwaffe pilots desperately tried to stem the Russian advance towards the Polish border. Considering the distances we had to cover, we were like a fire brigade putting out fires this meant being transferred every three to four days. We had tremendous logistical problems. So on a daily basis, we had to perform our missions and already think about the next airfield we were going to use. Faced with defeat, Luftwaffe pilots must call on reserves of inner strength to continue the fight. Soviet ground forces cross into Poland. The Red Air Force flies ground support missions to punish the broken Wehrmacht. Major Walter Kapinski, Luftwaffe. The Russian pilots were extremely good bomber pilots, that is, low-level attack pilots. In low-level flight formation, they would fly wing on wing, very closely packed, providing us with a large target which we could strafe from side to side. But they could nonetheless maintain formation, carrying their rockets and bombs to the target. They were very brave, but they naturally suffered great losses. There were a lot of pilots who died. The shift to new equipment, to new planes, all this made us carry on a very difficult battle with the enemy. I have a total of 275 recognized victories, of which the majority were in the East. Am I proud of any special victory? I don't know this expression, proud. Naturally, every victory increased the sense of self-worth of every fighter pilot. It contributed to his experience. But one can't really talk of pride, because when you see what's left of your opponent on the ground, I think any emotion that there is would probably exclude the feeling of pride. By mid-January 1945, German defenses crumble outside Warsaw. I saw German troops being surrounded. I saw German troops retreating before the Russians, which was something I had never seen before. And I saw the encirclement worsen. And eventually, 
I saw how the German troops were finally bombarded with rockets and artillery fire. Spring 1945, it is clear that the Russians cannot be stopped. As the Red Army advances from the east, Allied forces on the Western Front roll through German cities, blasted to rubble by incessant aerial bombardment. The Luftwaffe is Hitler's last hope for survival. 